Welcome to the Orange County Department of Education webcast on iPods and Education. I'm Robert Craven. And I'm Mike Garina. We're both part of the educational technology team at OCDE. Today we'll be focusing on a portable device that is making an impact in schools in Orange County and throughout the country. Since exploding onto the cultural scene in 2001 as a portable music player, the iPod continues to influence nearly every aspect of pop culture and modern lifestyles. With its sleek design and compact size, flashy ads with hit music, and the ubiquitous white earbuds found protruding from the ears of young and old, the iPod's reach can be found everywhere, from the gym to the mall, the car to the classroom. Today, the iPod is much more than just a music player. Not only has it redefined the way music is delivered and consumed, but it is also revolutionizing the learning environment. With large storage capacity, recording capability, and photo and video playback, the iPod is transforming learning and making it accessible 24 hours a day from any location. Its potential within education is being realized by educators who have seen the value of incorporating audio content into their classroom. Individualized learning becomes more possible when a student can have a broad array of media that supports their learning audiobooks, recordings of directions for lessons, audio support materials for second language learners, math facts, science experiments, and historical recordings can all be easily accessed by students. The potential for students to become producers with an audio device like an iPod is also significant. With a microphone attachment, students can create audio recordings of their stories and writing, conduct interviews, create voiceover narration for video and multimedia projects, and record data for science and math. This all can be done with a device that is much more mobile and compact than a computer. Are you ready? In Orange County, we are creating an iPod Loaner Lab designed to enable educators access to iPods for use in the classroom. This lab will provide teachers with equipment to engage students in activities using iPods. The ability to time and space shift learning with the iPod makes it an excellent device for teachers and students to extend learning beyond the classroom walls and enable discussions to occur any place at any time. We'll be talking to educators and iPod experts from around the country about how the iPod is impacting education right now and its potential as the device continues to evolve. We'll also be seeing some specific examples of how the iPod is actually being used by students and teachers. Long before television, audio was king. Americans relied on radio for information, news, and entertainment. With the growth of television during the latter half of the 20th century, radio's dominance waned. Then in 2001, Apple released the original iPod. With this, a revolution was born. Over the preceding four years and 30 million iPods, the iPod has transformed itself from a music player to a fully featured multimedia device. With each metamorphosis, the iPod gets smaller and adds more features. Public demand and the possibilities for education grow even faster with each transformation. As the reach of iPods and the iTunes Music Store expanded, new life was given to audio. Once more, it was a cultural mainstay. I'm here at the uh, Portable Media Expo with uh, Dennis Lloyd from iLounge, and uh, he's going to give us a little bit of an introduction to the history of the iPod and where it's kind of been and where it's going. So Dennis, you want to talk to us about a little bit about what the display shows here and maybe it's the kind of history from uh, generation one to the current generation. Well, that's exactly what this is. This is a iPod history wall that showcases uh, all the generation iPods uh, since 2001, all the way up to 2005. Uh, we've got the uh, first generation with the uh, moving wheel, uh, the third generation when they moved the buttons up, and you can see kind of the evolution of what's taken place all the way up to what's now the, the granddaddy. It's like the iPod video. I mean, here we stand now with a device that's created an entire industry on its own. And we're up to 650 accessories that we've reviewed. And we're probably going to announce 1,500 accessories by January. And that's unprecedented for any uh, device that's ever been introduced to have that kind of industry that's that's swirling around it. As the iPod infuses itself into our daily routines and permits us to carry our music, photos, and videos, how is it impacting and influencing the world our students live and work in? Channel, what station? We have a large community and uh, a large uh, iPods around the world photo gallery, which is a kind of a fun uh, take on the whole visual testament on how the iPod has turned into a, 
a cultural icon, and this is global. Uh, it's truly been amazing. I think it's gone beyond even where Apple thought it would go, certainly. Uh, when they first introduced it, it was only for the Mac. It was only an MP3 player, and it uh, only carried a thousand songs. And very quickly, people, including educators, started tweaking it for their own needs. They really said, "You know what? This could do more. I could put uh, I could put text on here. I could put uh, addresses and, and my calendar and all these different things." People started stick, sticking in there, and then soon enough, once we got to the second and third generation iPods and we had voice recording capability, a couple of light bulbs went off. iPod has become the Kleenex of our, of our culture right now. Um, if you take a look at any kind of portable audio, portable content player, you know, just, just the name branding of it, it's, it's, everybody uses the word iPod. So that alone, I think, is, is huge. But you look at what it, it has done in the past as far as with, with music, and it's just revol revolutionized the whole entire music industry. Um, with digital audio content and, and what have you, but with the advent of video iPods, I mean, I can't even tell you how that's going to change our culture, but I take a look at what's gone on just in the last two weeks, and now you've got movie content that's portable or any kind of video content that's portable as well, too. So it's, it's that anytime, anywhere access to information and content that really has revolutionized not only our culture, but, but the education community as well. The phenomena, the cultural phenomena that is uh, the iPod Nation, as they're calling it, truly is amazing because Apple really kind of crystallized the, what was great about an MP3 player and made it work. And they hit it at just the right time when we started seeing more broadband in, uh, in households and when the concept of MP3s had kind of gotten a huge boost from illicit MP3 trading. Uh, and that got shut down and we were looking for a solution. So just a couple of convergences really made it powerful and really made it take off. They started off with a very positive attitude and we've heard them uh, anecdotally whispering in the halls, sharing with their friends about their iPod, pointing to different functions and, and it's also they've been overheard to say, but, but we need to use these for educational purposes, not just to listen to music. <laughs> and you know, so we think that that's great uh, information. Uh, that we get back and that they've clearly gotten the message. I think what caused the iPod to catch on was a combination of just the elegance of the of the design of this device. It's it's so Apple-like, it's beautiful, it's easy to use. But I think combined with this device was the invention of iTunes. And I think the, the marriage of the two has what has made the iPod so successful because it's so easy to use in conjunction with the iTunes software. And I think, you know, I don't think administrators really truly realize how impactful that can be, that it's those little bits of time that you don't think you have that you can carve out with the iPod. Beyond culture in the workplace, the iPod is making significant inroads within education as well. In the classroom, iPods are utilized in everything from recording student fluency to providing ELL learners with access to audio and photo recordings around the clock. Famous speeches, student-created tours of museums and historical sites, student-created audiobooks, literature reviews, interviews, and numerous other projects. Teacher training programs and administrators are also quick to make use of this technology, empowering them with access to learning on the go. With access to so much material, how do educators see iPods impacting the classroom? The iPod program at, at Drexel is called the iPod Education Initiative, and we started it primarily focused on freshmen, new incoming students to the university, because we believe they would benefit most from four or five years of exposure to a new technology. And the idea was to really identify the iPod as, as something that was a symbolic of our attitude about technology and the ability of technology to improve teaching and learning within education. So we, uh, we decided to issue those iPods to incoming freshmen with a commitment to work with them uh, collaboratively between the faculty and the students working together to come up with new ideas and new applications of this particular technology in education uh, with the thought that if we could engage the students in that dialogue uh, that they could generalize the, the problem solving, the thinking, the, the applied creativity uh, toward other kinds of technologies as well. Making information portable 
and personalize so that a student could, with this device, connect to iTunes. If you take a look at, for example, like the iTunes Stanford, um, you've got content that you can subscribe to that fits your needs. You can download it to your iPod, and then you can take it wherever you need to go um, and, and have that learning on the go, which I think is a, just a <laughs> phenomenally exciting um, aspect of this as an educator. I think the benefit um, of using an iPod in the classroom is really mostly comes from mobility because everything that you can do with an iPod you could do with a computer and have been able to for years. And I think the biggest single difference is that now it's mobile and it's personal. So if you get one for every student or every teacher, it's in their hand and they can travel with it. It's the same revolution we started seeing with handheld, uh, you know, with the Palm environment that once you get it down to a one-to-one -one environment, you really start seeing some powerful uh, learning happening because they now take ownership, they now manage it themselves, they now control it. And so with the iPod, you've got mobility, you've got personal use, you've got enjoyment factor because everybody loves their iPod uh, and it cuts across all ranges. Um, so you've got that going for it. Uh, you've also got the incredible amount of media that you can utilize on the iPod now. It's not just audio, although that is still its primary purpose. Uh, you can have text, you can have text linked to audio, you can have uh, audio that's music, you can have audio that's uh, you know, spoken word, uh, books on, on CD or books on, on MP3. Uh, you can have uh, now video and photos, and you can also output from the, uh, the MP3 player, the iPod. You can plug it into a projector, you can plug it into uh, all these different devices that we've been using traditionally in the classroom that are bulky and a bit difficult to get around. Um, you can also record interviews, you can also plug in remotes on it. I mean, the things that you can do now with third-party adapters that stick onto the thing really allow us to take learning anywhere. Instead of being tied to a computer and a desk and, and, a, and a fixed facility, it really allows us to do what we know benefits learners, and that is take the learning outside of the four walls of the classroom and make it personal. If you can get together examples of quality learning and demonstrate them so that they're doable, and that they don't take hours and hours of planning and time in the classroom and take away from standards, that they actually are additive, um, then I think that you've got uh, the right mix of resources that you need to provide to teachers to make it happen. We talk about just general applications of the iPod, really good software, third-party applications. We did a, a meeting one afternoon on just the different third-party speakers and devices, microphones, things like that, that you can connect to the iPod. So we're using the iPod to uh, teach, help children, very young children, uh, about who are about um, six or seven, learn this uh, national language. And what we've got there are a series of um, recordings um, by native speakers. Um, we're using the enhanced podcast format, so we've got images um, synchronized to those audio formats. But we're also using the little iTalk recorders for them to record back their interpretation of, of the language. That's one, one sort of uh, project we're working on. That, that's nice, and we've got national funding for that. So um, it'll be quite good in that uh, the results of this project will go out to out the whole of Wales. Just going back to the creativity question, how much structure uh, is necessary to to spawn creativity, uh, and and. Uh, so that so that what the students do is is get the, the the foundation the ideas from us, but then extend those ideas rather than having to come up with an entirely new invention. So so that's one of the challenges for us this year is find out what's the necessary amount of structure at what age and what amount of previous experience so that they can indeed you know take the the baton of, of application and, and run with it. It's a uh, reading project again with younger children. Um, who will uh, use the, the, an iPod as a, a tool for hearing stories recorded by their teachers or ones we've uh, downloaded commercially. We have a, a great little um, website here called uh, talkingbooks.org, I think it is. And uh, we can download books very, very cheaply, a series of books, um, very cheaply, so professionally recorded books. But we're also going to use them as a, like a reading record. I don't know if you have that in the States where um, young children record what they read each day to their parents or their teacher. But we're going to use the iPod as a, a, a reading record. But they're actually also going to record themselves um, reading aloud. 
and then we'll, that will be uh, an assessment tool for the teacher as well. So the teachers are really keen on this, and hopefully that will be good. I think some other ways that I've seen iPods used effectively in our district um, are with English language learner students. We have a huge EL population in Escondido, and it's a way with the recorders that fit on the top of these devices to have kids practice their oral language skills. And we've seen that very successfully in a couple of our elementary schools. And another one we've got is uh, an oral storytelling project. Um, Wales has a, a tradition of um, oral storytelling, um, uh, sort of traditional stories that you have no script, you stand up and you tell your story, and we're, we're working on that. So that, that, that's really nice. And again, we're going to use the enhanced podcast format for that. So the only um, cue the children will have for telling their story is their storyboard. And then those storyboards will be synced with the audio, and uh, we've already done a few of those, which are really nice. It's one thing to, to state that you want to be uh, a facilitator. It's another thing to actually empower individuals to uh, to, to be creative, to uh, you know follow their lead, to construct their own meaning and, and their own knowledge. And, and that's what we think the iPod uh, has done for us. You know, the students aren't the problem. <laughs> My major problem is, first of all, convincing the leadership in the schools that this is a good idea. Because some of them are really cynical about it and skeptical about how how this will affect learning. Um, and then I tend to target younger teachers um, because I thought that you know, younger teachers understand the technology, and if they're on board, they really go for it. And uh, that, that's what I've done in all these cases. I've got younger teachers on board, and that they're really going for it in, in, you know, in a serious way. And, like, got to say, of all the projects I've run over the years, I've been doing this job for about five years, six years now, and um, of all the projects I've run, this is the one I've had the most enthusiasm from teachers for. While the iPod is impacting education on a national level, how are Orange County educators embracing it? Today we'll visit with OC teachers employing iPods in the classroom and discover why they believe it is an important tool in their teaching arsenal. I think it's enabling people to share a lot of things, pictures, music, and they can take it anywhere. So you're kind of crossing a lot of, a lot of borders, a lot of boundaries. Um, when I first used it with some second graders, uh, I had parents coming up to me saying, uh, what is an iPod and why does my child need one? Well, I started um, an after school class. The PFO here does after school classes. I started one called Movie Magic with um, it was supposed to be mostly second graders. We had some first graders in there too. And they used an iPod to record their voice um, as they read a picture book. And then we matched it up with the pictures from the book. And that was just an awesome experience for them. Even the most reluctant readers were so excited to get their hands on the iPod. And they wanted to make it perfect. So they were practicing that fluency. If they made a mistake, well, yeah, I want to do it again. And they could, you know, it's so easy just to record again and again, delete the ones you want, you don't want, keep the ones you do. So they had a great time with it. That's what I started with. And then I started using it with my kindergartners um, as well. So we started recording some of the shares they do. It's kind of like show and tell. Um, and they've kind of got a little system down where they introduce themselves. Hi, my name is so-and-so. Today I'm going to share this. And so our first project was our community fashion show, and they shared um, the community helper that they dressed up as. They shared what their tools were, what they did, and then we matched it to digital stills that we took. It's pretty easy to use it with them because it's so portable. So I, part of the struggle with kindergarten is having enough time for everything and everybody. So we started in the classroom, we went to our reading buddies, we went out to recess, and I just take this everywhere. And I just say, okay, your turn, come on over here. And they record it, and it's great. Um, a few problems, <laughs> and this is just me personally, they want to hold it, and I'm always afraid. <laughs> so we kind of hold it together the first couple of times. A couple of the kids wanted to put it up really close to their mouth. You know, it's just kind of first use experience. And they're so fascinated by it. They really listen to how they're supposed to use it. So after the first use, they, they really know how to do it. I'm also going to start using it for assessments once I teach them how to use the little turning wheel. Um, a lot of the assessments in kindergarten, they have to be one-on-one. -on -one. So I could have a child count as far as they can go, which is, you know, 100 or more, into the iPod without me physically having to be there. And then I can listen to it after school, you know, when they're not here and I have, you know, much more time. But the time in class with them is so um, 
so precious because they're so little that they go home at 1.30. It'd be nice to have, you know, an extra teacher to listen to them. To expand these innovative programs and spark others, the Orange County Department of Education will be offering an iPod Loaner Lab. This lab will enable teachers to check out iPods for use in their classroom. With these iPods and accessories, teachers can deliver their own lessons and engage students with the most current technology. Our hope is this Loaner Lab will provide excellent examples of innovative teaching practices in Orange County to replicate and display on a local, state, and national level. Orange County educators are already making significant use of iPods in their classrooms. In our increasingly media and technology-centered world, what impact will the iPod have in the future? And, uh, the video was what everybody had uh, rumored about and it finally came out. Um, we probably see it getting better as far as uh, sound quality. Um, the content is one of the biggest things that's going to move forward now since Apple's introduced uh, you know, $1.99 videos, TV shows with ABC, uh, Pixar. So we're probably going to see a lot more partnerships like NBC, CBS, and all the major networks getting aboard and providing content for that 5G iPod now. We announced that we were distributing those for our completely online higher education administration program. Because it's entirely online, because we have a national student body in that, uh, we'll be fully utilizing the uh, the, the video uh, capabilities so that um, we can have both be distributing information to those students, making them feel more a part of the, the fabric and, and culture of the university here, but equally soliciting their, uh, uh, their production of content from their end. Many of them work in other universities and colleges, and so we see this as a terrific program, an opportunity to have uh, enriched information flowing in, in multiple directions. Yeah, I, I'm really intrigued with the whole concept of of iTunes Stanford and maybe you know that being the next direction for education. Um, taking a look at what's capable or what the video iPod is capable of doing, and then what if as an education community we could have that content in an iTunes Music Store like format. That's you know, I would love to see it go that direction. But if that's all on iTunes, if that is then deliverable to a, a, an iPod, you're delivering con useful content. So you'd be able to say to um, to a group of children, okay, up on the, uh, the history podcast uh, channel for my school, uh, the latest recording of the um, the Tudor, the, uh, what is it, the Spanish invasion of, of uh, and in the 15th century is up there. I want you to download that to your iPod. We'll discuss it in the next lesson. You know, that sort of thing will happen. And that's the sort of thing that um, teachers are talking about out in Scotland. That's the way they want to use it for a teaching tool. Uh, personally, I think that the, uh, that the iTunes delivery, like the iPod, uh, because it's, it's a, a common, accessible, and uh, uh, familiar environment, uh, makes a lot of sense uh, as a means for distributing content because, again, people have already learned how to use the method and to then be able to get different kinds of content from that um, just just makes sense. I mean, the same way that iTunes evolved uh, from just music to audiobooks to now there's uh, you know video available and, and then other kinds of content, uh, it, it seems to me it becomes a, a multi-purpose uh, content distribution tool. I think we're going to see uh, a lot more adoption. I think teachers are getting to the point and, and administrators are getting to the point where they're no longer afraid of the technology and they're embracing it because they can understand it, they see it, they, their kids have it. Uh, they themselves often are using it. Um, I think we're going to see much more adoption. I think we're going to see continued innovation. I mean, just with the last three months, if you go back and look at what Apple did with the Nano and what they did with iTunes 6 and what they did with uh, even going back to 4.9 when they in included podcasting, and then of course now with iPod with video, the, the newest iPod, uh, they're going to continue to innovate. Um, and I think there's a lot of room for in continued innovations that would benefit educators. I think uh, a Bluetooth remote, a Bluetooth headset would be just incredible. I think the ability to tune in and, and pull in additional uh, media, there's always ways to do that. I think um, an easier step-by-step -step process to create a podcast that would be perhaps built into um, an iTunes product that would be cross-platform would really help education and really take us forward. Um, I think uh, additional content 
the ability to take your own home movies and put them on that iPod video right now requires QuickTime Pro, which is a bit of a hurdle for some folks, and a couple of technical steps. If they could integrate that with iMovie and Movie Maker on Windows and just make it a one-stop thing where, bang, it's on the iPod, they could make that a bit simpler. Um, I think uh, that's where we see the future going, and I think um, it'll continue to get smaller and better capacity and better quality um, and better third-party pieces. I mean, there's an entire iPod economy now supporting this, so uh, we are lucky in a sense that it's in the third-party and Apple's interest to provide tools for educators to use iPods in the classroom, so it's interesting. Thank you for joining us today at the Orange County Department of Education. Now that you've seen the possibilities of iPods in education, please join us for one of our iPod classes. Participants receive an iPod, accessory, and a three-hour course on incorporating the iPod into the classroom. To see a schedule of upcoming classes, visit our website at edtech.ocde.us. Please also check our website to subscribe to our podcasts and get more information about today's topic. Be sure to check back regularly as our upcoming webcasts include podcasting and education, education and web 2.0 technologies and others. For the Orange County Department of Education, I'm Robert Craven. And I'm Mike Arena. Catch us on your iPod.